Hey guys, it's Riley with RJ Films, and today I'm going to do another how to film slash edit skateboarding video. Um, it's been a while since I did my last one, but I decided that I would make one on ramping. Now I know this is pretty popular in skate videos, and you can also incorporate it into pretty much um, any other type of movie that you're doing. And I'm going to be pretty much teaching you how to ramp in Adobe After Effects and also in Sony Vegas. Now, you should know that in Sony Vegas, um, you cannot do an actual ramp like in After Effects where it gradually gets slower and then it gradually speeds up. Whereas in Sony Vegas, you can just have it going from fast to pretty much really slow and then fast again. Um, don't get me wrong, it still looks good and it's certainly a lot easier than taking an After Effects and I actually do the Sony Vegas way a lot more often just because I find working in Vegas is a lot easier than working in After Effects because After Effects is more for just certain um, visual effects as in like one clip rather than editing a full video so um, let's get into it so first you need a clip obviously to ramp and I'm going to use one of Marshall 5050 in the Herndon Rail now the reason why I'm going to throw in this one is because it does have a grind in it and a lot of people like to use ramps in their videos because they like the way it sounds or whatever not necessarily because of how it looks and whenever you're grinding obviously that makes a lot more noise than just doing a regular like flat ground trick or something like that so I'm gonna throw this one in because it's gonna sound nice once it's done and another thing to notice is that when you're ramping your frame rate plays a big role in how well your ramp is gonna look once it's completed so what you can do is you can highlight your clip up here and then come down to here and where it says frame rate, you can see mine is 59 frames a second. So you're going to want to be sure that your camera is set to 60 frames per second if it can record there. And also a high shutter speed would be optimal if you're using say a DSLR or a prosumer camera where you can adjust those settings. Um, I know on a lot of like entry level point and shoots they can film at 60 frames per second but you don't really have much control over your exposure. But um, maybe you don't even know what exposure is, but if you do, then obviously you know what I'm talking about. So just be sure you're recording 60 frames per second. My camera, the T3i, does uh, 720p 60 frames per second, um, and it can also record in 1080p, but really the drop from 1080 to 720 is well worth it um, once you get those extra 30 frames in there. So don't worry about decreasing your quality, it's still going to look nice obviously no matter what camera you're using so um, select your clip and drag it into After Effects and drop it into your project area and then once it's in there you can bring it into your timeline and that's going to create a new composition so um, as you can see here I'm um, at a pretty lazy angle um, Marshall was taking too many tries for this and I was getting tired because you know filming really uh, fatigues you so I'm going to cut my clip down just so that it starts right where you uh, start to roll up and I'm going to go to layer, time, and enable timer mapping and pretty much what this does is it's going to allow you to adjust the uh, speed of your clip so I'm going to want to go and right where he pops and that's where I'm going to start my ramp now you can start your ramp wherever I know some people like to ramp like um, once they ride away from the trick and everyone's like, ooh, yeah, nice trick, they like to ramp that. Um, whatever you want to do, pretty much, you can ramp it. Because like I said earlier, a lot of people ramp for the sound it makes, um, not necessarily the video part of it. So just play around with it, fine-tune your ramp. Um, I mean, really just practice over and over. Practice makes perfect, obviously. I'm not going to fine-tune this one, but um, definitely fine-tune yours in your video and it'll look nice. So I'm going to go to where he pops and I'm going to come over here and add a keyframe. And pretty much what that is going to do is tell After Effects that that's where I want to start my ramp. And then he's going to go, grind it, land, and that's where I'm going to end my ramp. And that's just going to tell After Effects that's where I want my ramp to end. So as you can see here now, you have your two keyframes. And you want to go over here to Graph Editor. And once you click on Graph Editor, you might see a screen like this where it's a slanted line now that's not what we're gonna want um, it took me a while to figure this out but 
when you see the slanted line that's the wrong graph so you want to come down here and you're going to want to go to choose graph type and options right there and then you want to go to edit speed graph as you can see here it's auto selecting the graph and we're going to want to edit the speed graph because we want to edit the um, speed of the clip so as you can see here we have keyframe one keyframe two then there's space in between the keyframes what we're going to want to do is select the space after the keyframe and then as you can see there it'll highlight it a bit so we're going to click it then we're going to click it and drag it and we're going to also hold shift because as you can see it's starting to go up so holding shift will keep it steady at um, full speed it won't speed it up a bit so once you have it where you want it you can adjust it later but then just uh, let go of your left click and let go of shift and then as you can see here we have a little box indent so we're going to want to click on the first keyframe don't do the second one it'll mess it up you want to do the first one first and drag it up while also holding shift to make sure it stays at uh, 100% speed before the ramp rather than if I were to let go of shift it would just get all weird if you see there alright so we have that and then as you can see now it's gradually getting slower and then it's just going to shoot right back up so we're going to do the same thing for the other side holding shift and dragging that up and then as you can see there that's pretty much a basic ramp I'll uh, do a quick render preview on this just so you guys can see and hear uh, what it's going to be like. Uh, not sure what it's getting stuck on. Alright. My After Effects is getting kind of laggy right now. Um, Alright, so as you can see there, um, it was kind of glitchy the first run around, so I played it again. Um, it's a little bit too slow, and as you can see here, we're hovering around the 0.2 second mark. Now, I like to never go below 0.2 seconds. Um, for this one, it's a pretty long ramp, so we're going to want to drag it up a bit. And like I said, really just fine tune it. Now, another thing you can do is you see these two things extending out from your two keyframe boxes you can click those and drag them to either uh, I don't know if you can hear my dog right now he's freaking out you can click them and you can drag them and pretty much what that'll do is it'll make it it'll make it slow down slower and then speed up quicker or uh, slow down quicker and speed up faster um, I mean pretty much just play around with it that's a big part in ramping um, the main part is really just playing around with it and seeing what works well so I'll play this one out So I mean, as you can see there, the ramp is pretty good. Um, I'm not going to mess around with it too much. Um, I might redo it if I were to make it perfect and adjust my first keyframe so that um, so that it really starts to slow down once he hits the rail. But I mean, it's pretty good there. And so yeah, so that's pretty much it for After Effects and now we're going to move on into Sony Vegas alright so coming into Sony Vegas again we're gonna drag our clip into the timeline like so and then I'll just adjust it so that it has Marshall once he's rolling up alright so once you're here you can zoom in a bit on your clip and then another nice thing in Sony Vegas is you can see the uh, waveform you can get in by waveform, I'm talking about this little thing here, which shows the audio pretty much. So you can tell right where he snaps his board by zooming in to where it makes the popping sound. Um, you can get this on After Effects, but it's just a whole lot uh, tougher than just having it right here in front of you in Sony Vegas. So I'm going to split the clip right where he pops by hitting the S key on my keyboard. And I'm going to go along and I'm going to stop it right when he lands and then once we have that I'm going to drag out the um, as you can see here we have three separate clips one two and three I'm going to drag out the third one the one of him riding away I'm going to click on the middle one I'm going to hold control 
And as you can see here, this little box, um, it'll have a squiggly line under it. And I'm going to hold control and drag this out a bit. And by doing that, it's going to slow down the clip. And I'm going to want to right click it, hit properties. And then as you can see here, the playback rate right now is 0.593. You're never going to want to drop below 0.4 when you're filming in 60 frames per second because then it's going to get, it's just not going to look good. So I can actually slow this one down a bit more. Um, it's kind of the same as in After Effects, you're just going to want to fine tune it. But um, that's a good number, 0.472. And here's a really, really important thing. Once you've done that, you want to right click on your clip and disable resample. Now I didn't know this at first, but I figured it out a couple months ago. It's going to make your slow-mo look so much better. It's going to make it pretty much what Sony Vegas does, is when you slow it down, it kind of blends the frames together because it's saying, it's like, oh no, we have a 60 frames per second clip and it's only playing at 24 frames per second. And so instead of just playing each frame slower, it um, tries to add frames in there and then that's when your slow-mo gets kind of blurry and just not very detailed or whatever, not very crisp. So disable resample and if you want you can disable resample on all your clips even if they're full speed. Um, it's much less noticeable on full speed clips but I mean you can do it anyways. And then also on your slow down clip you're going to want to right click on the audio, select properties and then lock to stretch. Now this is really important, I'm not going to click it yet because I'm going to show you what it sounds like without clicking it and then I'll show you what it sounds like with clicking it. So I'll just bump my preview down to half so it's not as laggy. Alright, so that sounded pretty bad, right? Let's do it again. Alright, so once I right click it and I click lock to stretch, it's pretty much going to change the pitch of the audio to match the slow down um, speed of the clip so it's gonna make it um, it's gonna make it more bassy or I guess that's not only really the right term it's gonna lower the pitch on it to make it deeper which is gonna just in turn make it sound a lot better so listen to it now so that sounds a lot better and that's pretty much it for your ramp um, obviously the Sony Vegas ramp is a lot easier than the After Effects one, but the After Effects one is probably going to give you a better uh, overall effect, and it's going to give you that uh, famous sound ramping sound. And um, that's pretty much it guys, uh, you can play the After Effects one again to compare it to the Sony Vegas one. And I'm Riley with RJ Films, and that's been my tutorial on how to ramp in Sony Vegas and Adobe After Effects. Hopefully it helped you guys out. Um, if it did, be sure to comment, uh, drop me a like, and subscribe. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. I'll catch you guys later.